Great. Uh, my name is Kat Science. I work at the Washington Post. And um, we've been working with the mean stack for a couple of years now. Uh, the project I've been working on was the first mean stack product that we started at the Post, and it's worked really well for us. We've since uh, started a numerous more projects uh, using this stack. And it's also uh, my team's first foray into using MongoDB. And uh, as developers, the mean stack and MongoDB has worked really well for us for a lot of use cases, especially where we need a lot of flexibility in our data. Um, and uh, so I'm going to talk to you today about sort of how we decided to go in that direction and what our journey was like. So yeah, we'll start out by um, just explaining the problem and why we had to build this, uh, this tool and why MongoDB was a good choice for it. Then I'll show you the main stack and just walk you through briefly how everything connects and show you how the stack works together. And finally, we'll do a demo and hopefully we can fit that in. But if we can't, the demo is available and I'll send you the link to it um, and I'll also tweet it out so, uh, so you guys can find it. It has very clear step-by-step -step instructions if you want to try it yourselves. Well, a lot of people are surprised to hear that the Washington Post even has an engineering department, uh, but a lot of large media organizations have to have robust engineering departments because we face a lot of really unique issues in supporting our newsroom. Um, we have an ever-growing online customer base and we need to find new ways to tell interactive stories and to interact with our customers. One unique use case that we faced is that we need to collect uh, user-generated content and be able to curate it quickly so that we can turn it over into stories almost in real time. Uh, and uh, one of those uh, cases where we needed to quickly collect several submissions and be able to curate them uh, is the annual Peeps contest. So every year, the Washington Post holds this Peeps contest where we encourage readers to create these elaborate topical dioramas out of marshmallow Easter Peeps. So here's the, the winner from this year. This is called Inside Out Donald Trump. So it's like the kids' movie Inside Out. So this is the like, kids' little personalities, I think like the happy, I think joy of like whatever the yellow one is, or like boxed up in the back and everyone else, and angers at the controls. Um, so this is topical, it's cute, it won, and, uh, and we were able to put them in the paper and show them on the site and they get a lot of engagement for us. The problem with this contest is that we get hundreds of submissions, which isn't that large of a scale in the computing world, world but when you have maybe two or three editors trying to curate all these submissions and complete the contest and publish the winners quickly, uh, it can get very frustrating using a tool that's not optimized for that. So we were originally using a third party form building tool, which wouldn't let our newsroom curate submissions quickly. They couldn't view photos, they had to download each of the photos to look at them. So they're going through hundreds of submissions, downloading all these photos to their PCs, uh, we tried multiple form, tool, form building tools and nothing really offered the curation process that we needed. So we really were coming at this from like a UI need perspective. So we decided we're going to build our own tool. It's going to make things easy for the newsroom. We're going to call it the submission platform. So we started building this dynamic form builder, the submission platform. And when we got started, we were building it from scratch. So we had this great opportunity to like pick our own stack and decide, you know, for ourselves how we want to do it, which is that really, I don't know, that's something that you don't get to do very often. Um, so I'll show you how we made that decision. Uh, we ended up going with the mean stack, surprise, surprise. And the mean stack, for those who don't know, is MongoDB, Express.js, AngularJS, and Node.js. So it's a complete JavaScript stack from front to back and JSON documents in the database. So here's kind of how those pieces fit together. Um, and you can see the overview here. It will start on the back end. Uh, so MongoDB is our primary data store. Uh, we use Elasticsearch also for search analytics. And if we have time at the end of the demo, I'll go into that. Um, but MongoDB is our primary data store. This is what uh, our documents look like, or you know, an example of a document in Mongo. And you guys are pretty, pretty good on the Mongo piece. Uh, the next piece that we're really going to focus on today is going to be Node.js. So Node.js uh, lets you run your JavaScript on the server side. Um, I have a code snippet of Node uh, of our, um, our server.js file 
And uh, in there, we're requiring Express, which is an HTTP framework. It's very popular and well-supported. Uh, we use that to set up our routes and our endpoints and um, handle our HTTP requests back and forth. And finally, Angular is the MVC framework that we have on the front end. We're not going to talk about that too much today, but if you want to go through the demo, there's a piece on that as well. So there's our stack. And so here's why we chose it. When we started thinking about what the data structure for this app was going to be, uh, for all these different submissions for the different types of forms the uh, newsroom is going to create, we realized our data was going to have to be really flexible. And it became clear that uh, we could do this well with a with MySQL, which is uh, what we would typically use for these projects. But uh, we decided that our data really fit the paradigm of MongoDB a lot better. And here's why. Uh, just um, if our data had been stored in a relational database, we would have had to spread every single submission across six different tables and reference all six tables in a huge join whenever we wanted to retrieve the submission. That was no good for us because we, uh, our most common operations are saving off and retrieving submissions. So we looked at how we would store our submissions in MongoDB, and uh, this made a lot more sense to us. This is that exact same submission that you saw on the previous slide, uh, except it's all stored in a single document in our submissions collection. So no matter what form the submission comes from, no matter how many photos it has, and fields on those photos, and subfields under those, uh, it's going to go into our submissions collection and we'll be able to draw on it from there. So our use case is more of one for flexibility than for scale. Um, and uh, so yeah, once we chose MongoDB, uh, we pretty quickly decided to go with Node.js for a couple of reasons. Um, it allows our front end developers to work easily with our back end developers as we're all working the same language across the stack. Uh, also, um, the paradigm of Node.js and, uh, and the Mongoose tool, which, uh, which I think there were some talks about at MongoDB World, uh, fit really well with MongoDB and uh, made it very easy to use. Uh, I've also used MongoDB with some of our Java applications, and that works great too. The MongoDB driver is uh, well supported, but this is I don't know, this paradigm sort of fit really nicely, and we wanted to try working with it. It's worked out great for us. So here's an example of using Node.js with Mongoose. Um, here we are creating our submission schema, and we'll see this done in the demo as well. I uh, just wanted to note that you can create these Mongoose schemas that can be as strict or as flexible as you like, in keeping with MongoDB's flexible nature, which is great. So we can you can see outside of the highlighted area, we're requiring certain things. Um, we're requiring that there has to be an approved, or just the approved value has to be a Boolean, uh, the submitted value has to be a Boolean. But uh, if you look down at like where we're defining media sets, tags, and form data, which is highlighted, we're just leaving those empty, and that's telling Mongoose that any kind of document can go inside of there. So any sub-document can go in form data. And that was the thing that gave us the flexibility we needed for these submissions. And so here's us putting that schema to use. So we're going to create our Mongoose model and use it. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the highlighted section, at the, well, at the top you'll see the schema that we just created. And then in the highlighted section, you can see we're using that schema to create our mongoose model. And now that we have this model, or we're using our schema, we're relating it to the submissions collection and using those two to build our model. And once we have it, we can perform any operation on that model that we could perform on the submissions collection. So here we're just doing like a simple dot find. Um, so just doing a dot find, we're passing in the uh, our search query, which is exactly the query you would use if you were working in the MongoDB bash. So uh, that's another reason why we like using Mongoose and uh, Node.js, because uh, it's just, it's a lot like working in the Mongo bash. There's not a lot of uh, converting things back and forth. You don't have to use the cursor to sort through your results. So you can get these JSON documents back and you can work with them natively. All right, so now we have a demo. Uh, and I'm just going to show you some of that stuff at work. If we don't make it all the way through the demo, that's all right. Um, we're just going to, uh, I'll show you where you can get it, and you guys can finish it yourselves if you want to give it a shot. So, just see. Yes, this is part of the demo. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you this worksheet. So I'm just in my 
root directory. I'm going to use node to run our server.js file, which is here. And this is just where we tell Node.js and Express how to set up our server, and where to, what port to listen for requests to, uh, where to uh, get all our imports. And now we're going to visit our site. So here's our app. It's very simple. We're going to add to it. Um, Thank you. All right. So here's our simple note app. Um, all it does right now is allows you to create forms and uh, then create form fields for your form. So this is our personalized form. Have two fields. It's going to be start and end time. And just for simplicity's sake, all of our fields are going to be strings. Um, all right, so we created our form, but we're missing some functionality. So find our proponent form. Yeah, so here's the form we just created. Uh, I went ahead and did the front end piece of this so that we don't have to go through that in this demo, but these fields don't work, creating submission doesn't work yet. So we're going to add that piece in. Uh, we need to build that into our API. So, all right, this is not going to be doable. <laughs> back, which is creating a model, and then we'll move forward to creating our uh, API. Right, can everybody see that? So we'll create our model first. Um, I'm going to copy the forms model. Here we have a forms model, and that's what's letting MongooseJS uh, post these forms to the database. We're going to create one for submissions. All right. So the name of our collection is submissions. I already have that created in the database. Uh, and this is just a database in Mongo Labs that I'm using, so you guys can use it too uh, when you do the demo. And uh, so the fields for our submissions are going to be similar to the fields for, fields for our forms. Um, they need to contain all of the form fields, except in a submission, the form field is just going to be a key value pair with field name and the answer. But uh, for forms, we're going to, or for submissions, we're going to need our form ID so that we can reference which form the submission belongs to. And that's it. There's our mongoose model. This is what our documents are going to look like when they get stored in MongoDB. server.js. Uh, here's where we're setting up all of our, just what our application should look like, what the server side should look like. And here we're requiring our routes, uh, which is where we're going to use Express to define all of our endpoints. So let's go to routes.js. And here we have Express setting up all of the endpoints for our application. We're going to add a couple of new ones. We need one to create submissions, and we need one to retrieve all the submissions for a form. So we're going to just copy the add form endpoint and change that to work for submissions instead. So this is the API that's going to get called when we hit submit on that form that you saw that's not working yet. All right, so we're going to create a new submission using the submissions model. 
And whenever someone posts a request body to this endpoint, we're going to get it and uh, use the submissions model to turn it into a Mongoose model that we can, or a Mongoose document that we can actually save to the database. Um, here we're just going to, we don't actually need these for submission. So that should happen automatically. The rec body is going to get set up or is going to set up our model if we don't need to set anything else for it. All right, so it's as simple as that. You pass your request body into your model. Uh, you now have a Mongoose document, and you can just perform a dot save on it, and that will save it off into the database. And then you will get either an error, or you'll get your document back just to show you what it looks like and show you the format or the ID on it, the object ID. All right, so there's our add submission route. We need one more route to make this work, and that's going to be our get submissions route. So let's see what would be a good one to copy here. And get all forms is going to be very similar to what we need. So here, we're going to get all the submissions for a form. And we need one more piece of data passed to us uh, when this uh, endpoint gets called, and that's going to be the form ID, so we know which form to retrieve from. So, and we need to pass in one more parameter, whereas get all forms is just retrieve all the forms for the form collect forms collection. Uh, we're going to want to only retrieve submissions that match this query. <coughs> Right, and I'm able to get to this uh, request parameter because Express is going to give it to me in the request under param. Params, yeah. All right, so we should get all the submissions back from this, and when we get them back, we're going to return them in our response as JSON under all. All right, so that is our API setup. Let's see if that's going to work. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to restart the server. Now we're going to try submitting to our form. All right, there's an error. We get to debug. Okay, so I'm coming back to our console where we are running our server, and I'm just going to look at what up is in here. Uh, I know that text is really small. I'll read off to you what I find. Um, so it looks like submissions is not defined is what it's telling us on routes line 62. So it looks like our submissions model is not defined.
So what ought to be happening is we're doing module.exports over here, which should be exporting this model as whatever we require this file, or wherever we require this file. So we're requiring our file over here, model submissions. switched up when I was moving these things around. Oh no, sorry, that's an old error. Alright, so part of this is working. Looks like we are saving off our document. For some reason it's not making it to the database. Possibly because database is unreachable. So that seems like a possibility. We're coming a little close on time, but I think the next problem that's happening is that this um, Mongo Labs database is not reachable currently. Oh no, this is my database. DBs to make sure it exists still. Yeah, that's right. So we got our meme for Kona database in there. Alright, we're just going to check out what's in the submissions collection. So what I think is happening is these submissions are not getting saved off, so our add submission route, there's something wrong in here. Uh, so we're creating our new submission from Mongoose, that piece is working. We're saving that new submission to the database. No errors are printing out. And potential issues could be that uh, sometimes when you're when you define your fields in your Mongoose schema, if you have a field name incorrect uh, and you, uh, you define one of these field names strictly instead of leaving them open like this one is, uh, then those fields aren't going to actually make it in. So it's possible that form ID is not the ID that our front end is expecting. Um, I'm going to check on that really fast and then I'll let you guys uh, ask questions and try debugging those yourselves if you want to like get the demo down. And if you do follow the instructions word for word, it will work, I promise. Um, let's see. I'm just going to look at our controller really fast and see what our controller is calling and maybe it's sending the wrong, uh, sending us the wrong stuff.
Uh, I think maybe the form of our request body is incorrect. So we're gonna copy what we did up here with the forms and just explicitly put the pieces of our request body in here. So ideally, you would get your request body set up coming to you from the front end so it's the right format and it'll go automatically into Mongoose and just work without you having to explicitly grab pieces out of the request. But we're gonna do that just to make this work. We went through a little debugging, uh, but um, if you guys want to continue debugging or if you want to like check this out yourselves and see if you can make it work, please do. Uh, but I think that's my time, so I don't want to hold y'all up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, I just think this is a very simple toolkit to get started working with MongoDB for like a simple personal application. Uh, it's a good way to get um, new people interested in the database. Uh, so I think it's good to learn. And if you check out this demo, it's a really good template to continue building off of. So anything that you want to build, this is a very simple set of tools that you can grab and take off with. So feel free to fork it and start creating your own stuff from it. Um, here's where you can get to it on GitHub. Um, if, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll tweet this out as well. And I'll try to, uh, I think these slides are going to get put up as well. So uh, please do check it out. I think it's helpful. And yeah, if you wanted to contact me, uh, this is my LinkedIn and my Twitter. Uh, these are my teammates who are also working on the submission platform. Um, so any of, us, any of us are like interested to talk about this and happy to help, so please drop us a line if you need to. And that's it. Thank you.